Hey everybody, today we are going to go over um, part two on how to spool turbos with Holly EFI and um, some tuning stuff. So uh, open up Holly EFI V6 and what we're going to do is open up the global file that I've been working with. So uh, I'm going to open up the most recent one which I labeled attempt two. Right here, hit open. So, uh, give a little background, I made a video on how to spool turbos a while ago and uh, it's got a lot of views, but I still see a lot of questions about how to go about um, getting your turbos to spool on uh, whatever engines. Most of the time it's somebody who bought a um, too big of a turbo for too small of an engine. Uh, and in our scenario here, what I'm working with, that's not the case. Uh, what I'm working with now is my own personal car. It's a 540 inch big block Chevrolet with like nine and a half to one compression and a, uh, 118 millimeter. So it's actually quite the responsive combination, but, um, this will still give you a good, uh, view into the process. Uh, hopefully we can keep it short and, uh, everybody can kind of learn something. So. This is the most recent global file that I'm working with. And if you notice, I named it attempt two. Uh, it's because attempt one um, was not the greatest. So I want to keep what I had so I don't go back to something bad uh, and then make revisions, rename it so that I can always go back and look at what was changed. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to pull up the data log. So hit data log and then hit open data log. Um, I have not renamed it yet, but so this is the first attempt. I just haven't renamed this one yet, but we can. So let's rename it and we'll call it vert new cam second spool. All right. There we go. We're going to open that bad boy right there. Come on. There we go. All right. So here's the log, right? Now, if you are unfamiliar, um, I've made other videos on this, but hopefully you are familiar with this, especially if you've got a turbo combo, you should know something, right? So, um, this is our data log viewer. This is, uh, these are all configurable based off of whatever you decide. If you want to change whatever you're looking at, you can multiple screens here, but you can also hit the E tab and scroll and you can drag and drop whatever you want into whatever you want over here. If you want to get rid of something that you don't like, you can left click, hold and throw it away. So we've already got some, uh, some views that we like, so we're going to hit OK, and then we're going to hit Don't Save. All right, so these are some views that I already like. So we're going to go to T-brake tuning, okay? So I made a tab that is just, you know, RPM boost, target dome, dome pressure, if I, you guys can read, hopefully. If you can't read, I don't know why you're watching this, but whatever. So, um... This is the tab of basically the stuff that the, the, the stuff that I want to look at um, when it comes to building boost on the starting line, right? So um, the first thing is, is there's boost and there's RPM, right? So what do we want to leave at? Well, it made 13 pounds of boost. And if we look, um, kind of stab the gas right around here, right? Um, the engine started to accelerate and then by boost peaked right around there at, uh, let's see, 3.5 seconds, right? Um, so we had some little jagged stuff right here. We'll address that here in a minute, and I'll show you kind of what that is. But uh, either way, most people would look at this and go, dude, we ain't got to do nothing. This is good. It builds boost in three and a half seconds. Like, who cares, right? Well, oh, it's less than that, actually, because we got at least a quarter second before. You know what I mean? I kind of whacked the throttle and then rolled back in it here so that we can get that, that dip and then that, that acceleration of the engine. So we're right around three and a quarter seconds to build peak boost. I want it better. Uh, I feel like we can always do better. Uh, the goal here is to stage this thing like a blower car. So you just roll in and light the, you know, you can, you can be sitting there and waiting for the other guy to purge the nitrous all day long and you can build boost as quick as you possibly can. So what are we looking at here, right? So we have the, the number one thing that I realized that most people miss when it comes to spool up tuning is fueling, right? So everybody gets the idea that, um, oh, I mean, I see it on, on Facebook all the time and, and YouTube commentary and whatnot. They all say, uh, oh, you have to retard timing to get, uh, to get it to build boost on the starting line. Oh, that's true. Um, you know, that helps. But, um, but if your fuel's like way out in left field, it, it doesn't help. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to open up a comparison. So again, this is the second spool attempt, right? So let's open up the comparison here. 
data log, and let's go first spool, right? So for reference, first spool is a fuel table that I made and pulled out of my ass, okay? So we're nudging this. We nudge the comparison here like this, and we get it to line up. All right, so here we go. Now we're lined up. So the first fuel table that I pulled out of my ass worked pretty good, right? Uh, it did work pretty good. It made less boost, even though dome pressure was a lot higher. I had the um, I had the uh, dome, uh, boost control solenoid swapped in the software on this global file. I forgot to fix it. That's why it's at 37 pounds. But um, but either way, the RPM is the same. All that's the same. But we made more boost with a cleaner tune-up. Okay, so that's the first first thing to look at, right? We made we made a good bit more boost at the same RPM. Um, we, at, at the same RPM and the same target, uh, but we have a cleaner tune-up, right? So that's the first thing to look at, right, is to realize that your fuel tune-up will fix a lot of your problems, right? So um, another thing I want to point out is that, uh, and this is nothing against anybody who does mail-order tuning or, or uh, uh, you know, remote tuning or anything like that, um, most people that hire somebody to remote tune their car are not willing to pay that remote tuner to spend hours and hours and hours to work on this stuff. So this is why I'm putting this video out, right? So your remote tuner is doing a great job, hopefully, you know, maybe not, but hopefully he's doing a great job at tuning your stuff. But, um, but this is going to be, this is what separates the people that uh, go out and are successful and the ones that go out and complain because they suck and they screwed something up and nothing works and it's all Holly's fault and whatever. So, by doing this um, and working with this uh, in your shop, not at the racetrack, right? Do this in your shop. You'll eventually become more successful at this. So what do we have difference here, right? So let's look at fuel flow. So we've got a pretty dramatic shift in fuel flow. So if you're not familiar with the comparison for data logs, the straight line, right, the non-dotted line, is the original data log that we're looking at. So it's this one, right, second spool. And then the dotted line, here you can see it real well here, the dotted line is the comparison. So the comparison is the uh, first attempt, right? The first spool-up attempt, right? So we see a pretty uh, abrupt change in fuel flow here, right? So let's get rid of this and just look at this RPM trace, right? Let's zoom in. Let's left-click, hold, and zoom, right? So now we can look at this this. This RPM trace nice and close, right? So we look and boost is still the same, but we got 300 RPM, right? We got we have 300, almost 400 RPM difference here, and that's because we're making more torque. Okay, why are we making more torque? Well, that might be a dead giveaway. AFR left is, uh, which is the only air fuel, you know, the O2 sensor in this car, is a uh, is a good bit uh, leaner, right? than the first attempt. So if we're looking at these boxes over here on the left, the base data log, which is attempt number two, is at the top of this list, and then the comparison data log is at the bottom of this list. So that's your values for each one of these, um, each one of these data logs, right? So we're still not where I want it to be, right? It's still a little rich, um, you know, in this area. This dead lean spot that you see up here, Right, see where it's going real lean? Here, let's move this so it's easier to see. It's at nine. There you go. So you see where it's really lean up here, right? This is a uh, kind of a kind of an inherent thing that happens when you have a 123 millimeter throttle body and a uh, fast foot, right? So it ingests a whole bunch of air, gulps in a whole bunch of air, and unless you put your um, acceleration enrichment through the roof, this is kind of just the nature of the beast. Um, I'll tinker with this a little bit more, but I didn't really feel like uh, to spend any time on it, right? So, our air fuel is trending leaner, okay? Which means our fuel flow is less. But people are going to say, well, no, you have more fuel flow here. You're right. We're 300 RPM ahead, and we're 0.4 pounds of boost ahead. So, of course, we have more fuel flow, right? Um, but notice, closed loop was pulling 17% out in order to get to that target, that, to that fuel flow, right? So, again, attempt number one was just a stab in the dark. Let's see what it takes. Let's, you know what I mean? Um, attempt number two was after I've reviewed the data from attempt number one, 
and made some revisions uh, that I felt were necessary. And obviously the revisions that I made um, netted us a, a pretty big gain here, right? So most people look at this and go, wow, it's only 300 RPM. Well, when you call your converter guy and you tell him where it flashes to and you tell him it flashes to 3,000, he's going to say, man, that thing's pretty tight. You tell him, hey, it kind of rolls over right on 3,500. He's going to say, well, it sounds like that converter's working. So 500 RPM is a huge difference when it comes to where the converter grabs. So our whole goal here is to make as much torque as we can, as quick as we can, to get through the converter and get to the chip, right? And once we get to the chip, we start popping, banging, and we make a whole bunch of boosts. So that's the first thing that we want to look at, right, is fuel. Let me zoom out a little bit. And first thing we want to look at is fuel. Um, I'm not going to sit here and tell you what your target air fuel ratio should be. That's going to be something that you, um, you can either come to my class and learn that, or you can um, ask Facebook, which I'm sure you'll get 300 different answers, uh, or you can just try some stuff, right? So, um, but either way, if you make a decision as to where you think your target should be, and you're, if you look, you were way out in left field here, the first attempt, um, it was quite a bit rich on the first attempt at 3.6 when our target was 4.4. Uh, we know we have we just we're just too rich, right? So um, we uh, we modify as we see fit. Next thing we can look at is spool timing. So a little bit hard to see, but uh, that purple line that is an advanced table that I'm using. Uh, if we want to, we can look at that. Come on, there we go. Advanced table 2D. There we go. Spool timing. So um, here we can. Activate overlay. There we go. So this is spool timing. So if you didn't know about this, you can go once you have a data log open, you can hit data log and then hit activate or remove overlay. So what when you activate an overlay, what it's doing is it is showing you um, everything that's on the screen, right? So uh, the best way to go about this is doing just that, right? So we cut off our D cells and Go back over here, and now we've got our entire climb going up the uh, up the ladder here, right? And build, build and boost. So my goal here was to make 10 pounds of boost on the starting line and then just stop. Apparently this engine uh, is a little bit meaner than I anticipated, and it doesn't really care. So I'm going to have to lower RPM a little bit in order to get that target boost down to 10 pounds of boost. But what that is, is that spool timing, right? So right now on the initial data log that we're reviewing, it should be uh, on its way to removing 3.7 degrees. If we look here, uh, we're right at 3 degrees, right? So it's on its way to getting 3.7 out of it. So if we look at that, how timing's coming out of it, right? Timing starts to come out here. We're not to the chip yet, right? So that's another reason as to why I'm not super happy with this area here. We start knocking timing out of it, and what happens? It starts to get richer, right? So the richer it gets, the further off your fuel tune-up is. So you've got two options, right? Do you want to take timing out of it as early as we are here? It's taking timing out at one pound of boost. Or do we let this thing roll and get to the, the chip and then knock it in the dirt and pull timing out of it, right? So uh, uh, so it's your, you know, it's kind of your call. Um, if you decide that uh, that you want to pull timing out of it, you're either going to have to modify your fuel table, build another advanced table that also pulls fuel out with the timing to try to keep this tune-up clean, um, or just deal with closed loop doing its thing and trying to save your ass, right? So, uh, and if we look on the first attempt, closed loop certainly saved mine, pulling 21% out, right? So, uh, but after we made some revisions, we're, we're floating right around 1-2%, right? So, uh, that's nothing really to complain about. So, um, the spool timing, again, is an advanced table that I created. And if we click here and we look, it's called spool timing, right? If you look and you want to see your advanced tables in your data log, when you click edit and scroll over, uh, right there, nope, not there, right there, here we go, um, there it is, spool timing, but you see this AT 1D number one, 1D gear number one? That is uh, advanced table, one dimensional gear, it's a per gear, uh, table number one, right? So these are all advanced tables. You can put all of these 
in your uh, in your data log to view them, as long as they've actually been enabled during that, right? So that's the next thing to look at is timing, right? So are we pulling timing too soon? In my opinion, for this application, I am going to um, I'm going to wait. I'm going to change this. I'm going to wait until we get probably wait until we get right around four pounds of boost before we start pulling timing out of this thing, right? Um, Honestly, with this combination, I don't even think we need to because it's so aggressive. It makes power so fast that it, it we probably don't even need to. Um, but either way, we'll, uh, we're going to address something there because I want to clean up this area here. Right? See this right here? So that's the next thing we're going to look at. So before you go um, jumping online and saying, man, I need 14 dump valves and I need a new converter and, and, uh, and the turbo is just way too big and whatever, Look over your tune-up, right? Because there's a good chance that fueling and timing are the uh, the main culprit as to why you have a laggy, laggy setup here, right? So um, hopefully this helped. Uh, I'm not going to get into what ignition numbers that you need to use and fuel flow and all that stuff. That's going to be up to you. I'm just kind of showing you how I look at things and um, how you can modify your tune-ups based off of this information. So. Anyway, hopefully it helped. I'm going to do a few more of these based around um, racing and turbo stuff because uh, it seems like I get the, best, the, the biggest feedback off of those. So if you watch this video and you decided that you want a, um, a video made on something that you've been struggling with or whatever it may be, uh, let me know in the comments and I'll either do it or I won't. So, all right, see you.